Hello and a very warm welcome to all of you watching at home while we broadcast this, our first live event from Clifton High School, hopefully giving you a real flavour of what it means to be a part of our community here, a community that we're really, really proud of. Now, I'm of the generation of Philip Schofield and Sarah Green, waking up on a Saturday morning, watching them on going live, so this is a pretty special moment for me. Um, but I know that there are others here that will be talking with you this morning that are a little bit nervous, um, so we'll, we'll see how things go. Now, each, between each of our talks, you'll find that there's a little gap and um, we're having to make sure that we remain COVID secure. So we'll be cleaning down the chairs and making sure that we make people come in and out in the proper fashion. Um, and so do please stay tuned and you'll follow all of the things that happened this morning. So why are we doing this, li this live event? Well, the thinking behind it is that we can prepare videos and show you what we can offer, but to really give you a taste of what it means to be a part of this community, we want to show ourselves as we are. And we, although we've got a few bullet points to follow to keep us on track, we're actually pretty much off script and we're trying to show you what we are, who we are and what we have to offer. So it could be quite interesting how this goes. Now, for those of you that pre-registered, you will have a little box of tea and biscuits. If you pre-registered before Thursday, or if we had your address on file, then you'll have those with you as well, with a little postcard showing you what the morning will offer. We have over 100 new families joining us from outside the school, and we hope that you are able to see what we have here at Clifton High School together with the videos. And we also have a number of families that are joining us from our own year six and year 11, a similar number, who are looking at their children moving into year seven and into the sixth form. And a welcome to you all. Now, a little bit of the history of the school. Who are we? Well, Clifton High School was founded in 1877, originally as a girls' school, and we've been proudly co-educational for about just over 10 years now. And in that short space of time, we've managed to become 50-50. We're a school that caters for children from the age of three, that's our preschool nursery, the Hive, right the way through to year 13, preparing children to go off to university. And it's that journey that is so very, very important. A journey that begins where we're stood in front of them, protecting them from the world, allowing them to see the things that we need them to see so that they can start to experience it for themselves. As they grow through our infant and our junior schools, we start to stand alongside them, building their resilience, building their curiosity about the world around them. And then into the senior school, which is what you're all here to find out about, we just step back a little bit, close enough to keep an eye on them, but watching how they take those first tentative steps towards independence. And then of course, as they move into our sixth form, we move further out of reach so that they're taking those steps completely independently of us, ready for the world beyond the school walls. Now we are unashamedly smaller than other schools in the Bristol area. And we're proud of that because it really allows us to know all of our pupils, to nurture them, to know what their strengths are, to build on their weaknesses and turn those into strengths, to develop their passions so that they really do leave here happy, all-rounded, perfect children ready for the world that is beyond the school gates. But we also offer the academic rigour and young people need to achieve that in their examinations. As much as we know that Clifton High School can provide the pastoral care and the all-roundedness to our children, we also have to understand that good exam grades do open doors and create possibilities. And so the learning that takes place here is central to what we do at Clifton High School. Now, part of that rigor is achieved through the diamond model, and you would have read about this, I'm sure, on our website. In years seven to nine, boys and girls are taught in single sex classes in each of the core subjects. So that's biology, chemistry and physics, maths, English, and also with PE. And that allows the teachers to tailor their education to them so that we can better match what's going on in the classroom with the stage of development that they're each at. And then when they're mature, they come together back into year 10 to begin their journey through GCSEs. People often ask me, what is the difference that Clifton High School can offer? How can you actually see that? It's all about our tagline. And every school has a tagline, and you'll know that ours is realizing individual brilliance. And it's one that we actually live and breathe by. Coming in as the new head of school, I've heard it talked about more than anything else. I listen to teachers talk about it, I hear it from pupils, and I know that it's what we make happen every single day. So the other day, we've had some really good weather throughout the last few weeks, 
And one break time, I sat outside on the steps outside of our, outside of our main building. And before I knew it, a group of year nine girls had come and sat on the tarmac in front of me. And they just had a conversation with me. It was so natural, it was so confident. And we talked about how I was finding the new job and how I thought about Clifton High School. I asked them questions in return. And each of them, their confidence, the way they spoke to an adult, it was just remarkable, something you don't see in every school. We also have prefects who put themselves forward to take over certain areas of the school, from diversity issues to LGBTQ plus issues. They come forward and they want to be able to talk about those things. I've had a year six pupil make an appointment to come and see me to talk about things that were on her mind. These are the things that make us special, realising the individual brilliance of each of our pupils. We're a dynamic school. We're prepared for change and we're prepared to change. We're developing our IT provision to focus on the way that IT can affect learning. We're also extremely excited to be developing a brand new sixth form centre that will be opening in the next academic year. A centre that will meet the needs of our sixth form students as they prepare for the world beyond Clifton High School. More information about that will be coming out to everyone soon as the next term develops and I'm really excited to share that with you. Now this morning you're going to get to hear from some of our teachers but more importantly some of our pupils as well to give you a real sense of what we're about. The timings and the details are on the postcard that most of you will have, but for others who don't have that, we're going to be here live for about an hour and a half so that you can find out about all the things we want to share with you. You'll hear from our deputy heads about the senior school. You'll hear from our head of sick form about year 12 and 13 provision. You'll hear about how the admissions process works here and the entry process. And the best bit, you'll hear from our pupils and students, our young men and women who make this place so special our head girl and our head boy. You'll hear from pupils in year seven, year 10, and even some of our parents who will share their experiences with you as well. Now, once we're done here, you'll find lots of pre-recorded videos about all the subject offerings that we have here at Clifton High School, all the sports we offer and the extracurricular as well. All those videos are on this webpage. Just simply click and watch. You'll find information about GCSE and A-level, and I encourage you to watch with your children so that they know what it is that they're looking at here at Clifton High School. Of course, none of this compares to actually having you here in person. And you can do that. You can book a tour. It will all be within our uh, risk assessment so that we make sure everyone is safe. But it's best to come and see us in person so that we can show you what this school is all about. Our admissions team are going to be here today uh, taking calls, but they're here all the time taking your calls, taking emails and arranging those tours for you. So please just get in touch with us at any time. So enough of me, let's make a start. And I'm going to introduce you now to Chris Collins, who is our deputy head, who oversees all the academic matters for the school, and to Luke Goodman, who oversees all our pastoral matters for Clifton High School. Morning, everyone. My name is Luke Goodman. And I'm Chris Collins, and we're both deputy heads here at Clifton High School. So the ethos of Clifton High School is all centred on inspiring our young people. We want to inspire them to be independent thinkers. We want to inspire them to be strong in their beliefs, in themselves, and have the confidence to pursue their ambitions. And I think what's really important with everything going on in the world currently, we want to build this resilience, flexibility and adaptability so they succeed no matter what life presents. And our aims of the school match that. Our aims are looking at ensuring we have outstanding teaching and learning, that we uphold those high standards and expectations in everything we offer, and that through the self-development and adaptability of both our young people and our staff, that communication is really key to everything we offer. What's most unique about life here at Clifton High School is that we've weaved in the business of education within our aims and ethos. And so everyone understands what it is to be part of the Clifton High School community. So uh, Luke, you've been here since the start of September and what have your impressions been so far? Yeah, so only in three weeks, Chris, I've really understood what an incredible community this truly is. It's friendly, uh, it's built on strong relationships and if anything, it's a family. It's about the life at Clifton High School and coupled with that, we have this Throughout every phase of the school, 
outstanding pastoral care. Yeah. And for me, that's it's incredible to see and feel. And it's a shame that we, we can't invite families in this morning to experience that a little bit more. And, and hopefully the, the flavour of today will enable that to happen. Um, but it is an incredible school and it's that nature of outstanding pastoral care that we pride ourselves on. Now, you've been here a lot longer than I have, five years. Yeah. Uh, you were head of maths and, and assistant head, and now as deputy head in charge of the academic and, and learning, what, what happens within that role? Well, I, my, my main aim is to make sure that every pupil gets the best out of themselves in their learning. So that starts from all the way down at the nursery, but particularly as they join the senior school in year seven, um, we make sure that their curriculum works for them, realising individual brilliance. So we look to make sure that the subject offering is spot on and gives enough choice at every stage, which it does. Um, we do offer bespoke um, pathways for people who've got particular talents or particular uh, support requirements as well. Um, and as has already been mentioned in year seven, eight and nine, one unique thing about us is that our maths, English and science lessons are taught separately for boys and girls, which, as research shows, helps to get the best out of them in, in their learning and so they make the most progress. Um, through those years. And at GCSE, how does that shape for them? Yeah, well, I mean, one of our great strengths there is a wide range of really fantastic subjects. We've got bespoke state-of-the-art um, equipment in music technology with a, with a brand new studio, um, product design, our science equipment is superb um, with, with a new uh, STEM room that we've got. Um, and the, the subject specialists through GCSE enable our pupils to make superb progress in, in those years. And we, we consistently get really high results. And throughout those years, we have the ability to have small tutor groups as well. Yeah. And you've been a tutor here at Clifton High. What does that look yeah, like? Yeah, it's one of the highlights of, of working here is how well you get to know the pupils, not just as a tutor, but also as, as a subject teacher. But the, the tutor role is, is really personal and individual. Every um, person in the school has a one-to-one -one appointment with their tutor every, at least every fortnight. And that enables uh, any problems to be picked up. No one falls through the gaps here and, and no one's missed off, off the radar. We, we look out for everyone really closely. And that relationship is quite unique for Clifton High. Yeah in the it's a two-way thing absolutely I, I, I find that more than any school I've worked in the pupils actually care about me as their teacher they want us to um to be okay they ask after our family they, they want to know how we're getting on as well and, and it, it, it's genuine so they're mature they're growing into um excellent young people who are happy to talk yeah. to adults in that way and at a level we our a level offering is superb I think that it's um, it shows itself in the results. So, for example, last summer, 2019, our A-level scores were called the best value added in Bristol, which means that with, with the results that people came in at joining our sixth form, um, they made the most progress compared to any other school, which is a superb achievement. And it's not all just academic. No. So this morning I would have typically been at Coombe Dingle supporting our, our games programme and, and doing some rugby and on a Wednesday I see you in kit as you take a year seven running group out. Absolutely. How many clubs do we, do we have here? At it's, it's over 130 clubs running every single week which is an absolutely superb um, thing and again more than, more than any other school I've heard of and the, the pupils have such a varied diet there's never any excuse to be bored. And that's before school, during lunchtime and after, after school? school? There's lots of different options. A lot of them are lunchtimes um, and, but we do sometimes have a uh, early morning keen beans doing exercise or, or other sorts of music um, uh, clubs and, and other things at 8 a.m. Yeah, no matter what it is, music, sport, drama, chess, there's a variety of different clubs on offer throughout Absolutely. the time. And it, it really helps ensure that we do realise every individual brilliance. Yeah, and I think that, that tagline does sum it up. So um, individual brilliance and every person getting to pursue what they're really interested in, passionate about, to help them be ready for their futures. Brilliant. Now we've touched slightly upon sixth form here. Uh, next you'll hear from Jennifer England, our head of sixth form. She'll be joined by our head of school, Matthew Bennett, as they talk about life in our sixth form. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. Now I know as with all live events, we are probably running a little bit behind. We're about five minutes behind where we should be at the moment. Um, but we're going to move on now to talk about the sixth form. And I'm going to introduce you all to Jennifer England, who is our head of sixth form this year. And uh, so, Jen, hello, welcome. Hello. And uh, just introduce yourself for us. Hi, I'm Jennifer Ingen, um, current head of sixth form and head of biology. I've been at Clifton High School now for just over two years and I thoroughly enjoy my job. Fantastic. So you obviously know a little bit more about the, uh, the sixth form than I do right sure. now, three weeks in. <laughs> so how would you describe the sixth form here at Clifton High? For me, our sixth form, sixth form is a community. 
there are diverse set of individuals, but they all encourage and they support each other through whatever endeavours they take. Um, for me, our students, we instil in them a life, lifelong love of learning. That's a tongue twister. Um, through our, our teaching, our teachers have a passion, especially with our sixth form students, because obviously they've opted to do that subject. Um, they foster a curiosity into them and they're allowed to ask any question they want within um, yeah. their lesson or even outside of their lesson. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that um, we've got those exciting plans that we're looking to build a new mm. sixth form centre. And obviously, uh, with that comes a lot of change. For you, what are the bits about the Clifton High School experience of being a sixth former that are really key that will carry on through that change? I think, um, for, for me personally, our sixth former are very independent. Mm -hmm. um, our, the change that they'll feel going to a new centre, they'll be even more independent. It will help them in their university, transitioning to university. And one of those things about transitioning to university that I've had very early experience of and it's really impressed me is this Futures and Skills programme. Yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about that. Um, so our Futures and Skills programme, they have um, a dedicated lesson each week mm -hmm. to um, help and support them in what they would like to do after, well, life beyond Clifton High School. Um, with UCAS, um, apprenticeships, this week, as you're well aware, our Year 12s are undertaking um, their own project and managing that, which I know you've heard a lot about. Yeah, it's one of the things, I, um, you know, they, they come to find me, and one group came to find me about the sick form centre, and they wanted to talk about budgets, and one wants to be a surveyor, one wants to be an architect, right. and they want to present to the, uh, the senior team about it all, and it is incredible what they... They are they, very yeah. excited about the new yeah. sick form centre. They're very driven as well, Very driven. They? Very driven. So... Explore a little bit more with me about the academic rigour. You know, how, how, how does that come across in the sick form here? So for um, our pupils, we offer a, a broad depth and range across our curriculum. Um, in 2021, we're offering psychology at A-level, yeah. amongst other subjects, which will be obviously a new thing by student popular demand, so they would like to study now. Um, our value-added is the best at uh, A-level of all independent schools in Bristol currently. Fantastic. That's yes, really we good. are. We're lucky. And in terms of the sort of the responsibilities that they get uh, and they, they have to be involved with moving on? They are our ambassadors. So our younger pupils, our juniors and our senior school and our infants look up to them. So they are our role models and they take this within their stride. We have our traditional roles and responsibilities. So we've got house captain, head boy, head girl. This year we've um, introduced different prefects. So we've got prefect of diversity and we've got prefect of LG. Um, well, LGBT <laughs> plus I had to think there um, and that's by what they've asked for so yes, what yeah. they're interested in and, and, it, and it's great that it is driven by them they yeah. are very passionate about very. this uh, I think uh, I mean, they'll be doing assemblies and all sorts of podcasts as well coming up they're, they're really involved with yeah. uh, and it's, it's fantastic to see that yeah and they won't feel as nervous as we do right now no. that's, <laughs> that's really good. excellent stuff so if you had to sort of summarise what the, the sick form experience here means what would you say um we instill in for me as well mm. just as you as well just in yeah. their dna a lifelong love of learning but in addition to that we rang them as individuals we yeah. give them the personal skills and the social skills to be able to do anything um that they want to go and achieve in the world we give them a toolkit which is unique to clifton high school for me yeah um if if there are an external people joining us at senior school um at six form sorry we had um, a boy who only joined us two weeks ago and he was live streamed to the year sevens this week fantastic um, for peer support and saying how he settled in and trying to help the younger years and I think you don't get that at a lot of places Brilliant. so how is that experience different from if you move from year 11 within the high school to coming in from outside um, year 11 transitioning into sixth form if, if you're at our school currently it's a different feel mm -hmm. it's a different responsibility yeah. um when I ask the, the sixth formers, they have even more personal relationship with their teachers and they can feel they can do anything and ask anything. Right. Um, but for our external pupils, there's so many, there's a myriad of opportunities to get involved with things, um, inductions, buddying system, but they're one cohesive unit. Yeah, yeah it's good, it's good. I, I, I've just been absolutely blown away by them already, you know, and just going around and talking with them all yesterday during the tutor times, you know, and they're just 
fantastic people to talk to and, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to work with them all myself. So yeah, thank you for sharing all of that. And I know often a lot of those things come across as sort of the teacher side of things, but uh, later on this morning, um, Jen is going to be talking with our head girl and head boy to really get a, a, an experience from them about what it means to be at Clifton High School sixth form. Next up, we're going to talk to Manola Saros, who is mm -hmm. going to tell you all about the admissions process for the school. Um, and so we'll be back shortly with him. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our open morning. Uh, I'm Manoli Saros, I'm the senior master, and I'm in charge of admissions at the school. So I feel very privileged and happy to take you through of, uh, about our admissions process. Uh, I would like to start by saying that uh, the most important thing at the moment is to fill in the uh, uh, application, the registration form, and then upload it for us so that we can send you as much information as possible. I will start by talking about the Year 7 entry process. Um, the uh, process is as follows. We start actually by um, requesting you to um, to, to send us the most recent uh, report of um, your child and then uh, we have a meeting with the head and during that meeting the head we believe that the whole family should come because um, we believe as a school that uh, family is very important and uh, we always uh, support our parents and then uh, we will require a confidential uh, reference from the schools and then we'll offer a taste a day. The culmination of all these then will be the entrance examinations that are going to take place on the, sixth of the, on the 9th of January, Saturday the 9th of January, and then there will be a repetition or a possibility to do it on the second time on the 16th of January if you haven't got the chance to um, manage it on the 9th. Uh, that would conclu conclude the process and then we'll be able to invite you for scholarships that the head uh, will uh, send you letters and uh, will be able to uh, discuss that. The entry into year eight is very different. So uh, we students can apply at any time throughout the year and uh, we will look at every entry and will reply accordingly. The year nine is again very similar, but uh, there will be the possibility of scholarships in September 2021. Entering to year 10 is slightly different. We would like every student to be able to uh, register at the beginning of the year and start at the beginning of, of the year in September, clearly because of the GCSEs. The sixth form is also very important at the moment and uh, pupils can start uh, applying uh, for year 12 for September 2021 entry. For that, we will require a report and uh, the predicted grade, uh, wherever possible, from your school. And then uh, we will ask you to offer us a seven grade in the A-level subjects that you would like to study, and then six further subjects with grade six at GCSE. That will be followed, of course, with a meeting with the head and the head of the sixth form, and uh, finally, at that time, the possibility of scholarships will be discussed because scholarships are available for the sixth form. If you have any questions, our admissions teams will be very uh, ready and able throughout the morning. We have a very dedicated team that will be very happy to answer any possible questions you may have. So please um, direct them to them by calling the school, they will be available up until one o'clock. I will also be happy to help in any possible way I can, so please don't hesitate to contact me um, if you would like that. Thank you very much. Uh, Matthew Bennett is going to uh, follow me, so we're going to have a short break and then he will uh, come in and talk to you. Thank you. So we're going to move now to the next section of this morning, which will be some sort of Q&A sessions with pupils and parents uh, in the Clifton High School community. But don't forget, there are all those videos to watch about all the different subjects that we offer, extracurricular activities and so on. So you can sit and watch those as well. But our live event now will move to that section. We're going to start by talking with um, 
both uh, Eleanor and Cam, who are our two uh, head girl and head boy for the year, our head prefects for the year, and they're going to give you a little flavour of their sick form experience. Now that's a slight twist, we put them first because Cam has to go off after this and uh, he has a job at Sainsbury's, so he's got a Saturday job and we need to make sure he gets there on time. So we're putting them first, so Jennifer England will come back and talk with them, and then we're going to talk to some of our Year 7 pupils, and then some of our Year 10. So we'll be back shortly. Again, don't forget our admissions team are here until 1 o'clock today, and they'll be able to answer any questions that you have. We'll see you in a bit. And welcome back. We are now going into our Q&A session. Um, and we're starting off with um, our six one pupils. This is Cameron and Eleanor, our head boy and head girl. Cam's been here since year five and Eleanor's been here since year seven. Um, so guys, why did you choose to study your A-levels at Clifton High School? I think that's an obvious question to me. The community that we have at this school and the relationship that you've built between the teachers and the students and how welcoming everyone is here. I just, I, there wasn't another option really for me. I looked at other schools, but just the, yeah, like I said, the community here is, is just amazing and all of the support you uh, get from all of your teachers is incredible. So. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I think for me it was definitely the small class sizes. You get them from when you join year seven. I mean, year 11, I only had two people in my class, so for Latin. So it was really good, I think, in sixth form. And I think I did look around, but even looking around, you sort of realise how good it is here. And I, didn't, I really didn't want to leave. Fantastic. What's the main difference from being in year 11 or senior school to transition up to sixth form? I think it's sort of the teachers, they definitely teach you, um, treat you with more respect, you have a different relationship with them and you can really see how much they love their subject. I think most likely they would have studied that subject at uni and so I mean even like yesterday our biology teacher brought out his university textbook and sort of talked to us even more in depth and I just I think it's really great. Yeah, similar to Eleanor, I think the relationship that you have with the teacher sort of comes more as they, they treat you more like young adults and you can have quite professional um, conversations with them that really help you for life after school as well. And um, as well with academic life, like Eleanor said, you can have really in-depth conversations because you start to learn more about the subject to the point where it can be university level and you can have really intelligent conversations with the teachers that I just don't think you could have other places. Yeah. Yeah. You've both mentioned our class sizes. What impact do you feel that this has um, on, on your education at A-Level or Clifton High? So in my Spanish class, for example, I only have three people in my class, me and two others. And I think the support that I can get from the teacher, since there's only three of us, is just amazing, like compared to any other school. Like some schools will have 10 times the amount of students and the teacher just they physically wouldn't have the time to look at every individual student, but when there's three of us, it's, you, you could have a whole lesson to yourselves almost. Um, so yeah, the support is, is amazing, and that is, goes across all teachers, and including the head. I think at other schools, you probably barely see the head teacher, but here I see Mr. Bennett on a daily basis. You'd have a conversation with him probably on a daily basis, which again, like at other schools, you just wouldn't get that. No, definitely, I agree. I think, especially I take science subjects, and if you have anything, like little niggles that you, as you're learning, you sort of don't quite understand that, they definitely, they really, really encourage you to go straight to them, even after the lesson, they're like, right, we have 10 minutes or whatever, like, anything that there's any problems, and you can go straight to your teacher, even in your free periods as well, like, I tend to do quite a lot of my work at school, and I can just pop over um, and see a teacher, and it's sorted within however long, rather than sort of letting it build up over time, yeah. How do you, you've just mentioned your um, free periods, what do you do with your free periods and how do you manage your time with your extracurricular activities? Um, personally I do quite a lot extracurricular wise, whether that's in school sort of doing hockey or like last year we both did doing enterprise, youth Edinburgh sort of thing. Um, even outside of school I think after school and it can get quite hectic so having those times in school where you've got access to all of your teachers, you can get all of your work done then and then do any extra or revision or anything like that outside of school. Yeah, like Ellen has said, I like, I like doing all of my work during those times because I think you need to have time after school to have the downtime and you don't want everything to build up and then to have it all crash down on you whilst you're at home and you're just not feeling it. So having the work, um, being able to do that in your free periods and like Ellen has said, having all of the support of your teachers, which again, I don't think you would get at other schools because they'd probably be busy with another class yeah. or something else, but your teachers have a similar amount 
maybe not a similar amount, but they have free time as well and they're always available. You can send them an email and they'll reply the same day. So. Yeah, definitely. Perfect. If you hadn't been here um, in our senior school and you were transitioned to our sixth form, how, how do you feel that pupils would settle in at our sixth form? I think even though we've been here for quite a long time and we've been able to uh, bond with our classmates for a longer period of time, I think even if you just come in for sixth form, you would make similar bonds that we have with all of our yeah. friends and teachers within the same amount of time, but just obviously you're there for so, so much shorter. And it, it, that I think is incredible because you'll fit in straight away. The community here is like no other. And um, the teachers as well, like you'll be able to have conversations with them that other schools you might just, you'd never speak to some of the, the other teachers. So. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think as well, our year 12 and 13, we share sort of a common room, a Wi-Fi room, the library, um, many other things. And even sports teams as well, most likely. Even if, you had, if you've been at the school, you probably played with them in year 11. But if not, then everyone sort of mixes. And I've got friends in year, in year 12 that I would meet up with outside of school, as I would with my year 13 friends. So like one big community, one big unit. Yeah, absolutely. Is what I like to say. <laughs> yeah. um, what sort of support have you had in terms of life after Clifton High? and like UCAS or what you're planning on doing? So I'd like to study medicine next year and I'm currently um, revising for my UK CAT, which is um, to get into medical school and I'm currently working with one of the maths teachers who's never taught me before, but um, he's provided so much support before school, after school and freeze. He's always sort of checking his timetable, seeing when we're av both available and he's just giving me that one-to-one, -one, which is absolutely incredible. Fantastic, Amazing, it? yeah. Yeah, similar to Eleanor, I've had incredible support from all the teachers, which like um, like I was saying before, for other schools you just wouldn't get because I think you could show your personal statement at this school to every single teacher. They would be willing to look at it. They'd be willing to help you out, um, including the head, like I was mentioning earlier. And we have Future and Skills as well every Thursday that helps us go through all of um, our application processes. And again, you have the support from the teachers there at that time for that. So it's, yeah. Yeah, Thank you ever so much, Cam. I know you need to get to work back. <laughs> um, I'll be handing over to Mr. Saras with some of, um, sorry, Mr. Goodman with some of our Year 7 pupils up next. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. I'm really fortunate to have been joined by two of our Year 7 pupils now who will just be able to explain a little bit about their transition into the senior school to give you a little insight into how they've settled, the kind of things they've been doing and just that general information about what life is like at Clifton High. So, welcome both. Uh, just want to introduce yourself, so yeah. your names and what you kind of like. Yeah, um, I'm Sophie, and yeah, I like sport, I like cooking, and yeah, I quite like drama as well. Brilliant. Um, I'm Alfie, and I like sports and maths and lots of other subjects. Brilliant. Now a little bit about the transition into our senior yeah. school. I know you've had different points of entry. So Sophie, tell me a little bit about your life at Clifton yeah. High so far. So I've been in Clifton High since reception. But yes, I've been through all of the younger years and then the juniors and now the seniors. But yeah, I've really liked um, the transition. And yeah, it was a bit different as well. With all the, um, I knew some of the teachers, but not all of them. So that's quite nice. And then the buildings and all the new people to meet as well. So, yeah. yeah. And now, Alfie, like me, we've started in September. Tell me a little bit about life in your primary school and then how that transition to Clifton High has been. Well, my primary school was a very small private school. And after I finished year six and joined here, um, it's very similar. It's small and it's very... Everyone here is kind and they're helpful and if you ever get lost uh, you can always ask the teacher where to go. Yeah. And what's been the best thing about starting Clifton High School? What have you enjoyed the most in the first three weeks? There are lots of new subjects and there are lots of new friends that will be probably friends forever. Yeah, brilliant. And in terms of the new subjects, which ones hadn't you seen before had a, or had a go at before that you now tried for the first time? Product design, art and design, food. Yeah, awesome. Now I know, Sophie, that product yeah. design and art and design are, are things you really enjoy. What's, what's been happening in the lesson so far this term? So in product design, we're building up to make a mood light. So I'm really excited about that. We had to pick a design and we're going to make it in 3D printers with like the blocks of wood holding 
the cable for the light. And so yeah, that's in product design. In art, I did a bit of it with a specialist teacher in year six, but not so much. So that's been really nice. And I think we're building up to making a mini beast with booted patterns. Sounds awesome. Yeah. And, and, and now for you mentioned friendships, uh, starting a new school, always had the opportunity to meet new people. How, is, how have you managed to meet new people and what friendships have you made in the first couple of weeks? Well, um, lots of my friends like sports. So if we're like both good at sports, then someone would ask if they wanted to be friends with, uh, with me. Yeah. And that's how I get to many friends. Brilliant. And obviously, so if you've joined us yeah. through the school, and so you've had a number yeah. of friends come through, but have you made some new friends with other yeah. new joiners? So a couple of people that I knew were joining had overlapped with me in other clubs. So I kind of met up with them, welcomed them. And yeah, I've got quite close with friends with some of them. But it was really nice sort of meeting new people, making new friends in our homeroom through sport and the playground. Yeah, brilliant. So, really and so um, you get to meet the people in your tutor group yeah. and you spend a lot of time with some lessons in there. Mm -hmm. But you also get to meet other people in your group through academic study as well. So how does that work, Sophie? Yes, yeah, so we're split between different sets and then there's girls and boys for the main things, which is English, maths and science. So, yeah, and languages you pick. So there are, it's nice because you get a wide range of subjects, some are with um, just girls or just boys, and then you do mix with form room and then other people for your languages choices as well. So Brilliant, really nice. yeah. And you've had the first taste of our tutorial system. You've got a, you've got a tutor uh, mm -hmm. on every kind of week to Thursday morning. You have that one-to-one. What kind of things did your tutor ask you, Alfie? What are they trying to find out about you in that first tutorial? Well, they try to find out what type of things you like, and then they then they try to find out how what group you would be in, like how good you are at work. Yeah, and they look to support you in different things. Yeah. And so these are great relationships you've suddenly built with yeah. your tutor and you've got a, a second tutor that you see every morning in registration as well. Now, this morning, you're, it's Saturday, you're in your school uniform, which is quite unusual, but it's not the first thing you've done for the school or with the school this morning. Talk to us about this morning, what have you already done? So, already this morning, we've both done sport, so Alfie's done rugby and I've done hockey so, so you've been to Coombe Dingle yeah yeah a nice early start with your peers and, and what were you doing in that session this morning so we did a bit of a warm-up then some skills and a match at the end so and this is hockey skills. yeah I'm brilliant and you enjoy you enjoy your yeah, sport really certainly what other sports sport. do you do you play so so I play football out of school and I also like well, actually I like all sports I like watching football who do you support Bristol City oh I'm sorry <laughs> somebody has to uh, Alfie, uh, you've done rugby this morning, what was the session like? Well, it's touch rugby because it's non-contact at yeah. the moment. Um, we did skills at the beginning, like passing and yeah. And then finish with a game? Yeah. Now that's just some of the sports we offer. Alfie, what clubs have you got involved with so far? Um, I've done chess club, rugby club, swimming club, running club. Uh, tennis club and a history film club. Wow, that's so many clubs already in only three weeks. And Sophie, can you match that? How many what clubs have you done? Well, I haven't done as much as him. I do a couple more out of school, but okay. I, at, in school, I've done hockey, water polo, running, and then I've done French film club as well. French film club, so a real yeah. a mix of different things. I think I saw you uh, the other morning, you come out of water polo club, and what a yeah. fantastic way to start the day, getting involved in having the swimming pool on site, uh, and then st and then back into to class and lessons in that capacity. That's fantastic. So um, we've, we've touched upon all the different areas of school life so far. Um, what are you looking forward to most in the future as you move through our school? Well, I'm looking forward to making new friends as people join. Uh, yeah, I also really like the community. Within years, everyone's friends as well. I, I'm friends with a few year eights, and that will grow more as when coronavirus stops and we mix with the years again, so that would be nice. Yeah, at the moment we're just we're with yeah. our bubbles, which means obviously the clubs and the lessons mm -hmm. and different activities are happening with the bubbles, but we're looking forward to yeah. spreading that across the school, definitely. Mm -hmm. Alfie, the future, what are you looking forward to in the future? I'm looking forward to playing lots of more sports 
and also making more friends. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. And, and do you remember this day? It looked very differently last year. Alfie, you would have come on a, a school tour. What do you remember about that experience of school site which led to you then choosing Clifton High School? Well, as soon as I came in and looked around the school, um, I just decided this is where I wanted to be for a secondary school. What led to that feeling? What gave you that instinct that that was where you wanted to be? Well, they have their own swimming pool, which not many schools have. And because it's quite a small school, it, it's very um, homely. Yeah, there's a lot of good friendships uh, that are created very, very yeah. quickly. And, and for you, Sophie, the fact that obviously you've joined us through the years at Clifton High, it was still a different transition yeah. point. I know the end of year six was slightly different than we typically would have had. And, and you were talking to me earlier about the, the fact that home learning and remote learning went really well for you uh, in the summer of year six. How was that transition process? Yes, yeah, so it was nice because I knew some of the teachers and I already had a couple of friends. But then it was also different um, getting to experience a sort of a new, almost like a different sort of, like all the buildings, they're different and some teachers. So yeah, I myself, I did a tour for the year sixes and then I was on a tour for what it would be like for me in year seven as well. So I kind of got both points of view there. Brilliant. Uh, just as we end our session, you know, what, what is the magic of Clifton High? If you could summarise that in one word, obviously a little bit easier for you, Sophie, but um, what, what is it about life at Clifton High you just absolutely love? Mm, I think community. Community, it's really community. Nice. The teachers, the pupils, everyone. Everyone together, yeah. definitely. I get a sense of that only after three weeks. And, and Alfie, same, you've been here the same time as me. What, again, is that word that kind of summarises your experience so far at, at Clifton High? Friendship. Friendships, yeah. And that's, that's the really important part of life in the secondary school. It's, it's having that experience, having that opportunity to make, you said, uh, lifelong friends. Uh, and continue to develop that over the many years. Thank you ever so much for sharing your experiences this morning. I know you're slightly nervous to be in school in uniform on a Saturday, having already got up early to do sport. Um, but we thank you ever so much for sharing your experiences and, uh, and I really look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Hello again. Um, I have the pleasure now of interviewing two of our young people, our fantastic Year 10 pupils. We've got Callum and Lauren, and they've been here, as you'll hear, for, for different amounts of time, um, and they've got lots to tell you about life at Clifton High School being in Year 10. So um, let's start, start with you, Callum. Just would you like to just introduce yourself? Hello, my name's Callum, and I've been here at Clifton High School since I was three in the nursery. That's a very long time. Lauren? Um, hi, I'm Lauren, and I joined in Year 7. Okay. Um, and I'd just, just love to know from, from joining in Year 7, um, how you found that initial bit coming from different primary schools and, and how um, all the friends get along now in the year group, wherever they came from. I think, I, I was definitely nervous they wouldn't really mix and the friends would kind of be the people who were there from primary school and then everyone who was new. But it turned out that we all just kind of mixed together and the friendship groups, like a few of them kind of split up and joined with new people. But it really, it kind of bonded a lot better than I thought it would. And it was really nice to like come into that, I think. Lovely. And um, Callum, there's probably not a lot about the school you don't know, being here yeah. so long. Um, it's an incredible amount of time, much longer than I've been here. Um, so tell us um, how your experiences have changed coming through. Uh, yeah, it, it's really good. It's been quite uh, relaxed up in the junior school. And it's quite a big step to year seven, but it's very smooth and the teachers make it really easy to bond with the new pupils. And both of you have now made another big step which is coming from, from year 9 to year 10 where you've chosen all of your subjects and, and you're studying hard now at the beginning of two year GCSE courses. So um, tell us what that's been like, How, how's that step up been? Uh, I found it quite nice because you get to drop the subjects you don't like and carry on with the ones you do. And, uh, was it difficult to choose? It, it was, yeah. There's quite a few ones that I would choose, but I had to let go, yeah. Yeah, I think it was quite an easy transition. I mean, 
I mean, we're definitely working harder, but it's kind of easier because it's the things that we really like doing. And we don't have to do the subjects that we don't like doing. So it's just, it's a lot, it's nicer to just be able to do that and be able to work hard and do the things that you really like, I guess. So you both yeah. have mentioned that. Um, what, what are your favorite subjects and, and why? Um, Callum, why don't you go first? Yeah, uh, I really like languages and sciences. And uh, I especially like one of my science teachers, Mr. Coffey, because he always finds a way to get his face or his school photo into the lesson on the whiteboard. That's good. So in his sense of humour. And you do Spanish as well, don't you? You're, yeah, um, I really like tell it. Tell us why, why you chose that. Well, I love languages just because they're quite useful and it'd be quite helpful to get a job. But um, you don't only learn about the languages, you learn about the culture of the country that speak it and stuff. It's quite nice. Lovely, thank you, Callum. What about you, Lauren? Um, two of my favourite subjects are maths and art. And they're I'm, two very different ones. They, yeah, yeah, they're complete yeah. opposites. But um, I really like art because there's so much freedom and it's not really like every it's not like other subjects, not everybody has to do the same. And you can really show what you want to show and you have a lot of choices that you get to make and you get to kind of express what you love to do. So I, I really like that, and the teachers are so supportive of just everybody doing what they want. I mean, within reason, but it's it's, it's a really nice subject to do. Yeah. Uh, and if um, if one of you were, were was happens from time to time was stuck in, in your learning in a subject, um, how would you go about getting back on track? Um, would you have the support that you need? Uh, yeah, it's very easy to get it from your actual teacher of the subject, but. Uh, personal experience of mine. I really struggled with maths, but I got help from the ELD department, like enhanced learning, and uh, they really help, they're really supportive, and they communicate with your teacher so they know what you can't do and what you can. Lovely, thanks so much for, yeah. for sharing about that. And, and what about you, Lauren? Have you ever struggled with, with something? Yeah, I always really struggled with spelling, and it was getting a bit hard last year, and so, I talked to my English teacher and she actually helped me after lessons out of her time um, to just find ways to make it work Great. and to improve my spelling and it's been so helpful. Great. And yeah. what about other areas of, of school life being in year 10? Um, we do have a, a tutorial system um, and you've got your personal tutors. Have you ever found that helpful for, for talking things through if you've got any, any concerns or, or how, does it, how does it work? It it works really well because uh, you get to know your teacher well and they get to know you better so they can help you with all your other subjects and any worries like outside of school as well, which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think the best part about it is they help you with things like friendships and other problems that you wouldn't really talk about with a teacher otherwise. Yeah. And it's nice to just like, because it's every other week, it's nice to just have that. Um, yeah just to be able to talk to somebody that you wouldn't usually talk to who can give some nice good opinions and help you with what you need exactly and yeah. i was your tutor in the past and i think that yeah. um sometimes you you have um those conversations and some weeks it's everything's fine no problems having a great time and another week it's really useful just to say do you know what this has actually happened and i've been looking forward to talking it through with the tutor yeah. and i think that yeah. people seem to value that and um, what about clubs and um, other activities during the school week that you like to get involved with? And um, Callum, what, what do you like to do? Well, on Wednesdays, I do mountain biking club. And Fantastic. That's really fun. We go out with the physics teacher. And we go down to Ashton Court and go on the trails. It's really fun. Brilliant. Nice to have that nearby. Some good trails down yeah. there, aren't there? Mm. What about you, Laura? And I, I like hockey and netball and rounders, all the kind of ones we do in games. And there's after school clubs for all of those throughout the year and um, it's really nice to um, be able to play in a team and not right now but usually against other schools and it's kind of nice to have that competition and that kind of drive with your peers to win. Brilliant. Yeah. I remember um, when, when I was at school some of the highlights of the school trips and um, so what, what about you? Um, what trips have you been able to go on either abroad or, or in the UK? Well, in year seven, I went on the German trip, which was to visit the Christmas markets. And it was, I mean, to this day, the best four days ever. Oh. I mean, it was just amazing to 
learn about like the culture that we've been learning about in school and also just to be with our friends on an adventure that we've never really done before and it was just so fun it was amazing yeah lovely wow I, i've not been there myself i'd love to go mm. i love the ski trips that we do we go to france usually and um it's really fun because you get to see like the friends like crashing on the skis and stuff and <laughs> the crashing is the, yeah. is the best bit it's yeah. really fun yeah. and um it, the food is really nice when you get back from being in the cold and it's like really warm and stuff yeah. lovely um now um as obviously at the moment there aren't quite as many trips running and, and you've noticed that schools have to run a little differently this this term um how, how, how do you find, do you think that the pupils have adapted in, in the slightly different times that we're all in this term? Yeah, I think we have. It's it's not that different. We just have to keep washing our hands, don't mix with the other years and uh, stay in your areas of the school. And other than that, it's, it's pretty much the same. It's really Lovely. Good. And you've still yeah. been able to go to specialist subject lessons yeah. for, for practical equipment. Yeah. I was, yeah. was going to say, we're really lucky because I think a lot of places haven't been able to do those things. But especially now we're in GCSEs and we kind of need that for parts of like coursework and practicals and science. And art, like what you and do. Art, well. yeah, yeah. 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 So it's just, it's nice to be able to go there and also just kind of get out of the room that you're in for most of your subjects. Absolutely. Seeing new people, yeah. Um, I think when, when you're in year 10 and, and other people's thinking about that age and um, maybe looking ahead towards that, um, the, the GCSE that sounds quite daunting and the workload you've already talked about is a bit more than it used to be would you have any tips for perhaps slightly younger children looking ahead to joining year 10 um, on, on how to survive and do really well um, at GCSE uh, yeah if you get a piece of homework and you don't have much else to do I do it, so I will you, because it's quite <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get it done, <laughs> yeah. Build up quick. on quite a lot, and it's yeah. quite tricky to catch up, otherwise. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also, focus in lessons, because from here on forwards, everything that you learn is going to be important. So if you don't focus in a lesson, you just have to yeah. teach it to yourself, which yeah. is difficult. So. It's a lot easier to learn in that environment with the teacher, yeah. with the other children, mm -hmm. rather than not trying to catch it up yeah. on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, and... I think the one thing I know it's I know you're only near the beginning of your GCSE course, but it can be a time also for looking ahead. Um, do you feel um, that the school is ready and able to support you as you make your plans and thinking about what your future might be? I know at my at your age, I found it really difficult. Someone said, "What do you want to do with your life?" and I didn't know at that stage. Um, how, how's that? How are those thoughts developing for for you guys already? Um, quite. Well, it's quite tricky to look that far ahead, but is we the other week we got a sheet asking us which A levels we'd like to do, and there was a few on there that aren't offered yet, like sociology and uh, quite a few odd subjects, and that'd be quite cool to look into if they're a thing. Yeah, we certainly have um, so, some A level subjects that you don't know about when you're at GCSE, and they're new ones to pay to, which people are often quite excited to. Yeah, to get it, to know. it was really exciting to see like all these new cool things that we could learn about, and it kind of opened up a new part of thinking about what we wanted to do with our future that we didn't really have before. It's it's nice to have, yeah. So coming towards the end of our time um, and talking things through now, I just wondered if there's anything um, that, you've, that you've not had the chance to say yet that you'd just like to say perhaps as, as your overall best thing about Clifton High School or anything you'd want to, any message you'd want to get out this morning. I mean, it's just the people. I mean, the teachers and all the students, it just, it, it's just so nice to have everybody and it really is a community. I mean... Everybody kind of knows each other. It's nice to have such a small school and you know everyone and you get on with a lot of people. And yeah, it's just so nice to have everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, Callum, you've been here so long. You, you must, there must be something uh, that's kept you here this long. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, obviously, school, school. You might not enjoy everything because you have to do yeah, a lot yeah. of work. But um, anybody that comes here or to any private school is really lucky. So I think that if you are watching this or you get a chance to come here, you should be very happy. And yeah, making the most out of the, the yeah. opportunities you've got. 
Fantastic. Well, look, you've come in. It's been Saturday morning. Um, there are often lots of different things you might have wanted to do, but you were both very keen and willing to come in and help us all. So thank you very much. Um, and I'm going to gonna hand back now. We'll be um, hearing from some of our, our parent bodies shortly, I believe. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Dr. Mark Kelly. I'm in my sixth year at Clifton High School. And this is the part of the uh, morning where we get the parent panels to give us their views on the school as well. And I'm Deputy Head Second Master. First of our two panels, we move to um, our two parents. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, please can you introduce yourselves with your name and which year your child or children are in and how long you've been at the school? So my name's Anna. Uh, my children have both been at the school since reception. So that was 2013, my eldest started and they are now in year five and my daughter's just started in senior school in year seven. Hi, good morning, so I'm Will. Um, I have three children at the school, uh, one in year eight, one in year six, one in year five. Uh, and they all joined around year four and five in, in junior school. Brilliant, thank you. And why did you choose Kitten High School for your children? Uh, we had looked before our daughter started reception and it was really the feel of it when we came for a tour and spoke to the headmaster at the time of the junior school. Um, the warmth and the enthusiasm of the staff just came across so much and I think it's like choosing a house. You really get a feel for somewhere and we felt that it was definitely the place for our daughter. Brilliant. Um, echo all that. And, and for me, um, I wanted a place of great learning for the kids. And the academic bit is really part of that's really cool and important. I really want my, my children to uh, be challenged and to achieve and to really do well academically. But actually, for me, there's a much bigger bit than that as well with education. It's how um, a school can help children prepare for tomorrow as well. I mean, look at where we are now. Yes. Um, and how it can look to the future and how it can also look back at core values. And for me, Clifton High really got that picture and really helps me feel comfortable that my children are being prepared academically but also for the world that, uh, the world that is out there. Yeah, thank you. And can I ask now, um, how did your children fit in? How did they manage to settle into the school when they joined? Uh, both of them have settled almost immediately really from starting. Um, in terms of our daughter in senior school, who's just started in year seven a couple of weeks ago, it's obviously been quite a smooth transition. She's a familiar with the school site, some of the staff, but there's a whole raft of new things for her as well. Um, navigating new buildings, lots of new subjects, teachers, loads of new children to, to um, learn about and understand each other. And I think she's just finding the whole thing exciting at the moment. It feels like a new start. She's thriving on the extra responsibility and challenges that there are ahead at the moment. It's Excellent. great. Thank you. Yeah, very similar. I mean, daughter in particular has just really taken off and she's really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I think we'd almost hope there'd be a bit more sort of need to lean on parents for support, but she's, she's out there, she's really loving it, made great friends. Um, and the teachers also have been fantastic. So yeah, been really, really encouraging. Brilliant, thank you. And can I ask now a bit about the communication you get between the teaching staff and you as parents? Maybe Mr. Yeah, sure. Um, it's, it's really interesting because um, what I like is that it's almost like the teachers get to know you a bit as, as, as children and, and as the parents. So um, there's lots of one-on-one -on -one communication, which is great. Um, and what I really like is how the school now seems to be moving more towards more modern means of communicating like this. And yes. if I look back only this week with the government's latest COVID announcement, Mr. Bennett put together a short video for parents. And actually for me, those things are, you know, those soundbite two minute videos are so much more personal, so more connecting than a letter. So I think the way the school communicates is, is done really well. Thank you. Um, I would echo that. Um, we've already had a phone call from our daughter's tutor this year to make sure that she's settling in okay and to discuss anything that we've got concerns with, which we haven't, but which is great. Um, and also I, I um, am one of the parents that attend parent ambassador meetings, which we have every term or twice every, a term? Twice every, a term, twice every term. half term, yes. Um, so we meet them obviously with yourself or um, and other senior members of staff group of parents and we can put our input into the school and it's wonderful because we actually see sometimes changes that parents have suggested yes, yes. and discussed and it, and it all goes into place so we really feel like we're part of the team. Brilliant. And we enjoy getting the parent voice as well from, uh, from, from all the parents as well. And maybe you could just tell me a bit about what happened, you've mentioned it already about the, uh, the school closure and what we've done since then. 
So can you tell me a little bit about how you feel the school managed the provision during the uh, school closure and also a little bit about the arrangements for returning to school? Um, so during the school closure, there was a whole package put together. Um, obviously, at the time, both of my children were in junior school, so we had a suggested timetable, daily maths and English, all the other subjects covered, including sports things, music, things, that, you know, and a creative challenges, which was absolutely brilliant because it just gave them the structure at home. They also had half hour phone calls with their teachers and their whole class um, on Microsoft Teams which was vital because it was like the, the link with school was the teacher. So yes. they, they loved that. And since school has come back, I just can't believe what they've managed to put in place in terms of outdoor sinks for all the children to wash their hands. They're trying to limit how much children move around school as much as possible. So it feels very, very safe. And my children certainly haven't been worried or upset about anything to do with COVID, they're just loving being back at school. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think it's easy to forget how quickly things changed back in March and how quickly yes. everybody had to adapt to this new thing. Um, and for me, the school did a, a fantastic job of just sort of switching really quickly and just managing that new model, going digital, but still maintain the personal contact, the one-on-one -on -one bit and, and small groups of children learning together. So really, really mixed well for me. And of yeah. course, we've also got the provision. So if families needing to self-isolate, children can now live stream yes. their classes, which is amazing. Yeah. So both all of your children are happy at the school. Very right? happy. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time this morning and all your comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're now going to switch over to the uh, second of our two um, parent panels. Just give us a few moments to, to clean up uh, the chairs here, and then we'll uh, introduce those two as well. After we've finished this uh, last one, we're going to hand back to uh, the head so that we're going to then um, do a final close for this morning's more parents meeting. Good morning, both. Morning. And welcome. Would you like to introduce yourselves and, and also um, give me the years that your children are in and how long your children have been at the school? Yeah. My name is Rachel and I have two children at the school, two girls. One of them is in year nine and she started in year seven, so she's been here two years. And my other daughter has just started in year seven, so she's been here about three weeks. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so my children started in reception and I have now got a sixth form and my name's Gaia. Thank you, thanks so much. And can you tell me why you chose Clifton High for your children? For me and my family, the most important thing is that our children are happy. And so we look around lots of schools and the minute I walked into Clifton High, I literally felt that happiness. I looked around the school, there were lots of happy children, lots of great chats between children and their teachers, which I think is so important. Um, and also the other thing that really matters to us is a really rounded education. It's not yes. just about exam results for us, it's much more about the sports provision, the mm. food tech, the music, the drama, the performances. There's just so much to do here and we wanted to make sure that that's the kind of education our kids have. Excellent, thank you. Um, so I chose a school, or we chose a school initially, a long time ago obviously, but actually we choose and we choose every time, so every transition. So for sixth form, we did look at subject choices and teaching quality, and I, I suppose from all the schools that we looked at, Clifton, we knew the teaching quality and we were very sure with that. So, you know, likelihood of getting good grades was obviously very important, but then also the roles and responsibility and the, the ethos for fostering independence in sixth form and and how the sixth form is built was very important for us to choose yeah. in choosing to stay. Thank you. And can you tell us a little bit about how your, your, your daughters have settled into the school? Yeah, so we started in year seven, so we didn't have, we, we weren't here in junior school and, and initially we were a little bit you know, perhaps concerned about that because lots of kids were coming up, but actually there was nothing to worry about because mm. the provision at the beginning of year seven was excellent. They had, in the July before, they had, um, uh, opportunity to come to the school and in fact even during Covid uh, my younger daughter did an online treasure hunt and all kinds of things with her with her peers and then they have a whole day at the school before anyone else comes it's just the sixth form and the year sevens and all the way through there's just been excellent communication from the teachers you know I've had a phone call from the tutor of my daughter and they just settled in very very well. Brilliant and Gaya maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, your son moving into sixth form how did yes, that transition which... go? 
which um, has been a transition actually because there's a change you know you have to wear a suit you've got to use a tie every morning there's all these kind of different changes that happen but it's actually also dropping down to your three subjects that you're much more interested in so that sort of injection of enthusiasm to come through the sort of flexibility or it's not so much flexibility but the new structure having free periods etc and how you have to manage your yes. time so there's quite a big change even though you're staying through the school there's, there's enough of a change and been quite a big change for them to get through which has been help, helped by the tutors I mean you know this teaching staff have really supported that change yes. and making it, we're making it happen as well Excellent, thank you um, Talking about parent opportunities to meet other parents how have you found obviously as a, as a new parent coming in how do you find opportunities? Well, first of all, we're obviously in an, an online world now. So both both my girls that we I have WhatsApp groups with the parents, which is excellent and a brilliant way to find out things that you may not be so sure about. But also, there's an excellent parents association. Um, and last year in particular, we went to lots of events. There was a whole growth at the beginning of the year. I realised we're in COVID, so that may not be happening, obviously. But there's also the Christmas fair and just lots and lots of opportunities. There's also the big performance, and there's just often times where you just can talk to parents even if it's at, uh, you know early in the morning at the hockey pitch you can chat away to another parent and learn lots yeah and again not led to tell us a bit more about the excellent parents association <laughs> of course i'm biased um so i've been involved in the parents association for over 10 years um there is there's two pillars to that one is the sort of social charter that we're trying to sort of support the school to, with the community and extend it to include parents and then the other bit is a sort of fundraising well when i say fundraising it's really about just adding those additional icing to for things that the school might want to do. So um, we, yeah, it's, it is thriving. We do a very well, good job in the in both charters, I believe, in both pillars in sort of delivering to those goals. And um, unfortunately, this year we're having to have a little bit of a step back and decide on how we're going to go in the virtual world. But but hopefully we'll be back back online soon. <laughs> And finally, what advice would you give to parents who are maybe looking to uh, move to the independent sector for the first time or are not sure about where to send their children uh, during just before a transition? What, would, what advice would you give to them? I would say that it's, you know, this, I think this is excellent, this, this virtual morning, but I, mm. if you can have the opportunity, come and come and see the school for yourself and, and book a private tour and also bring your child if that's possible yes. because... <laughs> That's really how you're going to see the school running. There's nothing better for us than to actually come into the school on a normal school day. And you really see that actually there's, that's just what the school's like. And we, I think we actually came more than once. And each time we were just so impressed with that. And also, if you can, try and talk to other parents. Um, and I'm sure that the school will probably even connect you with other parents and they can talk to you about that, particularly if, like me, you hadn't, you weren't in the independent sector before. Mm -hmm. I could certainly talk about those kind of things yes, and the definitely. differences. And I think, yeah, just just kind of look around and ask lots of questions. Okay, wonderful. Okay. I echo most of that. I'd also say talk to the children if you can. I know with the restrictions as they are, that might be quite difficult, but, um, you know, they, they speak volumes and, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, the league tables, et cetera, et cetera, you know, the school is a, has diverse capability and, and as I, I think there'll be you know, people we mentioned in the value add, et cetera, et cetera. So don't, you know, league tables are one thing, but actually be truthful to what you want for your child and then, and then try and see them in that environment. Really? That's, you know. Yeah. Thanks for all your opinions and all your advice this morning and have a good morning. Thank you. Thanks. We're now going to hand back to um, Mr. Bennett after a short, uh, short interlude. Thank you. So it only remains for me now to thank everybody that's been involved with this morning. Uh, thank the, thanks to them all for coming in and giving up their time to make sure that we got across to you at home a real sense of what it means to be a member of the Clifton High School community. Don't forget our admissions team are here until 1pm if you have any other questions, any follow-ups or in particular if you would like to book a tour and come and see it for yourself and know exactly what it is that we offer here at the high school. Also thank you to Floating Harbour for making all of this possible and getting out to you at home and uh, don't forget all the videos that we've had made so that you can find out even more about the subjects and the extracurricular offerings that we have here at the high school. Thank you finally for watching. Uh, and we hope that we can all meet you in person soon. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.